As you know, we've postponed Not Your Average Conference Creativity until June 8, 2021. Please get it on your calendars now. You won't want to miss it. We're thrilled that our creative leaders, Mark Wood, Sherry Sturman, and Wendy Rodrigue, already have it on their calendars and are ready to be with us. They can't wait to see you in person and they were actually happy we postponed the live event so that they would be able to be here. But recently I had the privilege of speaking with all of them and today I want to share that conversation with you. They're going to bring you words of encouragement and inspiration. I know that you will feel their energy through the screen and will be even more excited about meeting them live next year. As we watch this and head into this day, please keep in mind we have framed this day for you and we want you to consider two conceptual questions that you will hear throughout the sessions today. How is change rejuvenating? How can A plus help you rejuvenate? Let's hear from our guests and begin to formulate our thoughts to those questions. And I am excited here to be here with our three amazing creative speakers who will be live and in person with us next year. But as for today, we're excited to be coming from New York, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Texas together. We have also with us Deb Wyant, who is Mark Wood's assistant, and she is joining us today and going to help me in co-hosting this discussion today. So first I'm going to ask each of our speakers, our three speakers, to introduce themselves briefly and we are going to begin with Sherry Sturman. Hi, I'm Sherry Sturman, the Director of Education at Crayola. Uh, what I do is inspire creative teaching and learning in schools, but said a little bit more colorfully, uh, my job is to bring colorful wings to the invisible things that live in children's minds. Excellent. Thank you, Sherry, and thank you for joining us. Next, Wendy Rodrigue. Hi, I'm Wendy Rodrigue, uh, coming to you from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, three years ago, I founded the Life and Legacy Foundation in honor of my late husband, artist George Rodrigue, and I bring original museum quality paintings into schools and allow those paintings to take us on a journey, an inward journey um, into our own creativity. Okay, thank you, Wendy. And next, Mark Wood. Hi, everybody. It's Mark Wood, a uh, founding member of the Trans-Siberian Orchestra and a famous disruptor in our music world, taking the cues and inspiration from our great composers like Beethoven and Mozart and Stravinsky, who change everything and surprise us every day with the power of creativity through learning and through combining and really embracing the beauty and power of the mystery of music and creativity. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. And I think our participants can already start to feel that energy through the screen of why Oklahoma A plus schools uh, Institute is so excited to work with the three of you and know the three of you and have you as partners. And while we look very much forward to seeing you a year from now, we're excited to have you with us today. So thank you. So the first question that uh, I have for you today is what would you want to say today to these educators to help rejuvenate them after everything they've faced through this pandemic time? And again, let's start with Sherry. So the, the word of the day is change. Never before in our lifetimes have we experienced so much change so quickly. And what are the two things that we know about change? First, it's really unsettling, right? It's disruptive. Well, that might feel like a roller coaster of emotions. The second thing we know about change is that that disruption really creates innovation. It becomes fertile ground for creativity. Well, it forces people to see things with a new perspective. Let's try an analogy, right? Think of tourist versus local, right? So when you are visiting a new place, everything excited, you're curious, you're wide-eyed, and you see the things that tourists take for granted. 
and they just become complacent uh, and, and don't notice things. So what change does is turns all of us from being locals who, you know, sort of get into our routine and forget the, the, the splendid and the spectacular. Um, and it disrupts us just enough that everything we see is new and we're curious about it in ways. So we notice more details. Uh, we're able to see a different picture. And that helps us identify uh, new things that matter and new connections. So hopefully you're feeling that connection between change and creativity, uh, which really ties into definitions of creativity. I, I'd like you to think about your favorite definition of creativity. Um, some of the ones that are really popular are new ways of solving problems. Isn't that what we're doing, right? Everything like grocery shopping, which, which used to be routine, now you gotta solve some problems. Um, and it's the ability to see what's not there and create something new, right? And we are creating new things, new, new relationships, new ways of communicating. So it's about making connections between seemingly unrelated ideas. And that's what this change is, is forcing us to do. Um, so uh, some good will come from all of this disruption. Wonderful. Thank you, Sherry. I always enjoy your analogies. You always have interesting perspectives that inspire me and make me think. And, and definitely, um, you know, this has provided a creative space for us for sure a forced one and sometimes we like to not be forced into creativity but great things come so thank you i really like that all right wendy what what would you have today well i've been very fortunate during this well in many ways in my life but in this shutdown in that i'm i'm in a little um protected creative Space and venue that I have felt very rejuvenated by um, during this time and done all those things that I thought, you know, haven't we all done that? Um, I, I didn't have two weeks before to do this or a month before to do that. But I recognize also that there are many people who have suffered through this, uh, many educators who have suffered through this and had a lot of. Um, well, having to reinvent the way they do things. And that reminds me of a time in my life, the most significant time in my life, which is when my husband died. And I was in a hole so deep and so depressed. And I think that is true of many people in what's happened with this pandemic. And I thought I'd never come out. And when I finally decided to come out, it happened because I realized how much he needed me. And where did I do that? In schools. And the first school I went to was a little school in southwest Louisiana, and I went to visit with pre-K, because let's face it, who can be sad around pre-K, right? All you pre-K teachers, you got to make it, because you're going to be pre-K students, we're all happy. So I go to visit with pre-K, and I pick up a children's book. It's just going to be real easy. I'm just going to read that. I can do this. I hadn't been around people in almost two years. A lot of people right now, it's been two months. And I sat down and I read, hello, my name is George and I am an artist. And then I burst into tears. I couldn't keep reading. And this little boy on the front row, he jumped up and he ran forward and buried his head in my lap. And all the kids came and they smothered me with hugs. Oh, I want to be nice to hug again and all of that and suddenly I was really crying but it was tears of joy I was laughing and I said will you read it with me and they said yes Miss Wendy and they all came around me and read it together and I was on my way and now I've been to you know 100 schools in the last three years and in eight states and all different demographics all different ages I mean everything so healing for me um, to see also that I've been able to inspire others with my story but more than that I think um, it's with with authenticity and if I had any sort of advice to give out of what I learned it's this, it can be very scary to be vulnerable but I recommend it because kids um, yes um, it's important that they respect you but I think it's also important that they relate to you 
and relate to you as human that this has been hard for you too as it's been hard for them i would i would recommend be honest with those stories and with your experience and and just let it take you somewhere unscripted good luck wonderful thank you wendy and i've had opportunity as some of our participants probably have too to be in the room with you uh when you're telling those stories and as you said it's very authentic and you just pull us in just as you're doing now and and thank you for that vulnerability and sharing that moment and again for me that is very inspiring to think about uh being open enough to help others so thank you for that that's rejuvenating Mark, let's go to New York and hear from you. Um, we are in New York, which is the epicenter. And I'm really curious to watch these videos a year from now and see what we actually did in response to a cataclysmic moment in humans and our behavior to each other. So I'm really excited. And as I said, New York is the epicenter. And I just read that Andrew Cuomo, our governor, is going to be speaking with Bill Gates for Bill Gates Foundation to be funding a whole rejuvenation of our educational system. While we're hearing that, which is great news, while we're hearing that, we're hearing that the arts, orchestra, band, and choir, and other programs that require concerts will be done as an after-school event, which I am not happy about, uh, the pushing aside of that. So what we need to do right now of our music teachers and our art leaders and creative leaders is that we are not being pushed aside. Um, the power of what we contribute to a child's life. Kids sometimes go to school just to play music or just to go to the art program and paint, and that it allows them to escape from their lives and, and whatever their lives are. And I think that what we need to make sure is that our teachers can continue connecting with their students right now. Do not disappear because they're inundated. They're in front of their screen eight hours a day. Do they really want to work on their viola technique or clarinet technique with their teachers? And believe it or not, that moment with their teacher is critical for them to maintain the most important um, understanding of what they do as musicians. And what we do as musicians, what I find to be such a beautiful thing about music in schools as a teaching moment, is the magic, the unpredictability, and the ambiguity of creativity is the most powerful message that we can instill. A person standing next to me um, anywhere in the world may listen differently to music than I do. I respond emotionally from my past, from my growing up with my parents being musicians and artists, but the person next to me may not have that experience at all. How do we teach that person to listen deeper, to feel deeper, and think deeper, deeper with creativity. And as we know from Steve Jobs to Bill Gates to Elon Musk and these great leaders, they all played music. Einstein played his violin. So we have a direct connection with music creativity, with the intellect, and balancing that with a critical moment of graduating students who are not just academically strong, but also can immediately identify solutions to problems, developing executive skills. That comes from music. So my big fight of the year is don't push us aside. We are equal. I've always believed at every concert I talk to the parents and administrators, the three A's, academics, athletics, and the arts are this. And that's how we create the future of America's learning and internationally, how we can marry the arts equally, not as a, oh, I, we don't have time for the orchestra rehearsals today. My brother's a string teacher in Connecticut, and he was telling me that for years, he's on his 30th year of teaching orchestra, right? For years, the kids come late to the classroom, the teach, science teacher, oh, you, we don't have time for you to go to orchestra today. You have to study this and this and this. So the constantly conflict with time management, where my brother says now, he does one-on-one -on -one exactly 30 minutes, he's getting more time 
one-on-one -on -one with his students. Of course, he's doing it eight hours a day, every day. It's exhausting, but he's finding the quality of the teaching has been invigorated by this weird moment. So let's not push this aside as being, okay, we can't do sports. We can't do music. We cannot fit that in. Oh, yes, we can. So at this moment, let's reinforce a one-on-one -on -one message to two-on-one -on -one smaller ensembles and get these parents and students to realize, to continue realizing what we always know. Creativity, music, and the arts are critical to the mind and the body and the soul. I know that these participants that are, are watching today um, have really gone to the, the arts and creativity and found ways to engage students and encourage them to take the learning beyond whatever the lesson is in the moment because they have to go out and do life. And I'm hoping that we can take that back to schools as you do and, and rather than relegating it to after school, which is fine, that's great reinforcement and good, but being able to implant it and embed it and integrate it right into the school day as we know, when you and I first met, we are right on that same page together. So thank you for that. All right, Deb, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Okay, well, I'm so excited that you have a group of teachers who are, are rejuvenating themselves. And um, as a retired teacher, that is very exciting for me. And I, listening to the three of you gets me excited. It makes me want to be back in the classroom, um, although I'm, with Mark, so I get to help him be in the classroom. But, um, but so thinking about next year and the, the participants for next year, um, what do you guys want to say to them looking forward to being in person and getting to do this live as planned next year? Um, Sherry? Yeah, I'm really excited that when I see everyone next year, I'm going to ask you about an assignment that I'm going to give you now. So we're not going to wait for a year to interact. I'm going to give you a creative challenge that starts immediately. We have a, a special moment in which you can document a historic experience, right? So you personally and your students have this wonderful opportunity to capture the stories of today, right? Hopefully we're never going to have to experience this again. And it's been, what, since 1918, since it happened? So it's a once in a hundred year event. So your assignment is make thinking visible. Whatever you're thinking, whatever you're feeling, sketch it, document it. A visual can convey meaning in a way that sometimes the words are hard to capture, right? The colors you use, the bold lines, they can express the emotions that you're feeling inside and spark that conversation and that memory. So whatever type of art form you do, it could be bold paintings with colors that represent your feelings, or it could be a sketch that uh, literally maps out the journey, the journey from March to May 2020. What did it look like? And what do you predict it's going to look like uh, between now and say August or September when your school would normally be starting. You might draw what schools of the future are gonna look like. Uh, you might answer specific questions about the ups and downs, the roller coasters of your feelings, right? Um, another sort of mental uh, sketching, uh, a thinking and sketching project could be what we call innovate, make it great. Think about the problems we're facing today and sketch a solution. Right? So design new ways for kids to get to school with social distancing so they're not sitting right next to each other on, on the bus uh, seats. Or a new hand washing system that makes it easier for kids to disinfect and to clean uh, as they're interacting. So uh, I just suggest you take this moment, document what you're feeling and thinking. This is, this is something that you'll be showing your grandkids and your students will show their grandkids. They won't believe. Uh, that something as invisible as a virus could be big enough to ground airplanes and, and cancel birthday parties. So this is a time to make your thinking visible. I, I love that. And what a, a great um, activity, something to do with students as well. You know, they're, they're as confused about all of this and what's going on. So, wow, what, I love it. I'm going to do that <laughs> when we get off the Zoom 
meeting. Uh, thank you so much. All right, Wendy. Thank you. With me by George Rock. Thinking about next year, well, these presentations are very um, organic. Oftentimes I make changes the very morning before I go into the presentation. And I thought, uh, um, what would I do today? Today, I actually would probably bring rocks in addition to paintings. Because yesterday, I was out in the art of nature with my husband, and he has turquoise mines. Can you believe it? I mean, like, turquoise mines. It's incredible. And we were out there in beautiful nature and finding rocks. Look, here's a piece from another mine in Kingman. Can you see? It might be easier to see on the screen. And I would show this kind of art and how does nature's art turn into, say, this kind of art. Yeah, the ring that Douglas made and designed by George Rodrigue. So I would bring paintings like this. Um, this is the kind of work that George did for hospitals on highly reflective materials so that the kids could see their faces um, alongside the dog and the blue dog, which he's very well known for painting. And hopefully it will take them out of a dark spot and make them feel brighter again and make them laugh and feel joyous. So if I were presenting today at this conference, it would be things along those lines, the things that have inspired me in the immediacy um, in hopes that you could also find things in your immediate area that inspire you. I can't wait to see what that will be next year. As we all know, everything can turn on a dime just like that and change in a different way. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you and learning from you as well. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Well, you know, being flexible and being quick on our feet is is all definitely part of being a teacher. And and learning how to to think that way is so important for for our students to teach them to be flexible and to be able to think on their feet. Okay, Mark, your turn. Okay, so this is the what I do every day, and of course routine is the only way we survive. Yoga, exercising, eating properly, but what I always love about life, when you speak to the, our elders who are brilliant, and they say, gosh, if I only knew then what I know now, and I was like, you know what, let me use that as a mantra. So in five years, Mark in five years is going to look back at this time, instead of Oh my God, I gained 200 pounds. I didn't exercise. I was a mess. Instead of that, five years, Mark is going to say, Oh my goodness, I took a vacation five years ago. I'm not sure why I took a vacation. I've been waiting for years to take time off and really focus on the projects that I have been thinking about. And um, I discovered this, I created this, and I built a violin with seven strings on it. Oh my goodness. So the creativity is boundless. So my mantra every day is, is Mark in five years, how he is going to think back on this time. And I want to make sure that what I do now will be reflective of power, innovation, and creativity. Of course. I mean, that's, that's what we live by. But, but you know that you brought up the thing about having time to be creative. You know, sometimes I think that we don't allow that. We don't allow enough of that thinking time, that downtime, to, to allow ourselves that creative thinking. Um, so I think that's super important going into this next year and thinking about, um, you know, how you move forward is making sure that we, um, allow that time we give kids that time we give teachers that time to to be able to think that way so um i'm super excited about next year i hope everybody else is too all right so thank you all so much i am i'm excited i want to like after this is done go out on my front porch and shout to my neighborhood how inspired and rejuvenated i am but i also want to open this up for just a moment and see if there's any conversation that you all would like to have with one another if you have any question or comment for each other as our our keynote speakers mark so wendy what the artwork that's behind you is that your um 
the art and that blue dog is was that painted in New Mexico or in the, your other place? Artwork that is behind me and surrounding me is in this creative space. This particular piece is by my late husband, artist George Rodriguez, who I talk about a great deal on the presentations and will definitely have original work with me um, during the conference. And then the artwork on the walls behind me are by my current husband, Douglas Magnus, and are paintings from a series he called post he calls Postcards of Life. You see they're from He's painted them from all over the place. These particular collection is landscapes. Um, and it's interesting, thank you for asking about this space because um, this was my project. Um, I, I didn't build a musical instrument, but I built this space during, during this pandemic, this shutdown. This was basically a storage area that Douglas painted in a corner of. And he said, do you want to transform it and do something? And I said, yes. And we made it our studio. And, um, I still don't know what kind of artist I am, but we're in my studio and I feel really creative. And oh, awesome. that's awesome. That's really cool. And Sherry, you're um, more, are you more of a, a writer um, or a teacher? Where, how would you def uh, define a little, A little bit of all of that, right? Um, ceramic art is, is my art form, but um, was a teacher. And now because I do teacher training, I write the course uh, reflection journals for all of our courses. So a little bit of all of that. Now the ceramic work that you do is, are we seeing that on your wall behind you? Uh, no, that I, nothing that painterly, um, more uh, coffee muggy. <laughs> is that an example of it? Um, I think that one my daughter made, we, we both are into it. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. Well, it's great to meet you guys. And so, Mark, you have to tell us about your wonderful studio you are in and share, you showed us one of your creations, but tell us a little bit about your creativity and your creations on the wall and the things around you. Oh, thank you. I mean, it is astounding that we do not choose our parents as we come in through the universe, right? You just pray that your parents aren't dysfunctional, even though every one parent is pretty much. But my parents, I go to the fact my mother's a concert pianist, I had four boys, popped them right after another, and she was determined to have a string quartet. My father's a famous painter, actually, an abstract artist, uh, and um, his uh, family. My grandfather's Henry Ford's architect. My grandfather put together this whole furniture making company. We, we made furniture for Amelia Earhart, which is at the Smithsonian Institute. And when I was a kid, I would go into the wood shop and build electric violins, not acoustic, but electric, because I was so into Jimi Hendrix and the Beatles. I got a full scholarship to Juilliard, worked with Leonard Bernstein, classically trained, but I wanted to rock and roll. So all these Violins right back here are my inventions. When I was 12 years old, I built the first electric violin. And then now I own a company that we manufacture around the world for musicians. Uh, this is my Emmy Award for a composer. I also compose music for a television film and my own career. And these are all my record, uh, gold records of climbers from the trans Siberian Orchestra, which I'm the founding member of. So yeah, I'm, uh, uh, I, I'm very busy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And you are all very amazing. And it's wonderful to be able to be transported into your spaces and bring you into ours. And that for me, like I've said, kind of at the beginning, it's rejuvenating that we can do this now and, and find joy and happiness with each other in so doing and look forward to when we can be together but this lays such a great groundwork to get to know you and to be looking forward to having you in person with us uh, on our campus next year. And thank you so much for spending this time with us, for your energy and giving us such a great day. Well, I hope that you all do feel inspired as I did from spending time with Sherry, Wendy and Mark. Uh, incredible people with such unique creative perspectives and I hope you'll take time to think about Sherry's assignment so many things I mean COVID is where this all began and why we're doing this this way today social justice always there's always something in our life that 
good and bad, can still inspire us and help us to find our creative voice. So I hope that you'll really think about the things you heard today and, and think about them as you go through the rest of your sessions.